Hello, and welcome to my review of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. After playing Assassin's Creed Origins and mostly enjoying it, I was interested and at least partially excited to play the next installment. Hot on the heels of Origins, Odyssey was released one short year later, on the 5th of October 2018. As the 11th major installment in this long-running series, it is set in the 5th century BC during the Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta, around the year 431 BC. Despite releasing after Origins, it predates the events of its predecessor by nearly four centuries. But more on that later, where I'll also provide a summary of my experiences, thoughts, and feelings towards the end of the video. You either play as Cassandra or Alexios, and unlike its successor Valhalla, whose choice is permanent, Ubisoft says playing Cassandra is the canon storyline, but it doesn't really matter. In the beginning, you'll play as a legendary Spartan warrior in the tutorial before gaining control as adult Alexios or Cassandra, and beat up a couple of grown-ass men and presumably kill many more. As you've probably already seen, ancient Greece looks spectacular. The buildings, architecture, colors, and lighting is a pleasure to look at, and the ever-changing time of day will only enhance your experience. They really nailed it when it came to the graphics and visuals in creating a lush and vibrant world with pockets of civilization and a mountainous landscape teeming with wildlife and vegetation. I know they had to take some creative liberties when recreating this world since most of these places are either lost or in ruins, but I think I can excuse them for that. What this team didn't do well was optimized performance. I'm not sure how these performed on the PS4, Xbox One, or Nintendo Switch. But trying to sustain 60 FPS on PC with modern hardware at the time was a tough task. One of the biggest hits to performance were the volumetric clouds. Really? The clouds. I never looked up and thought, wow, the game wouldn't be what it is without this. 10 out of 10. Review over. I know that cloud. It's a cumulonimbus. Did you know that? As the years go by, this game will only get easier to run, and it probably won't be much of a problem. Sort of like how Unity aged. But... Ubisoft has a very poor track record when it comes to optimizing their games for PC. I wouldn't mind sacrificing some next-gen graphics for better performance. Heck, I still like the way Unity and Syndicate look. They look amazing even to this day. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the gameplay. The free running or parkour was great, and it's as good as it's ever been. Parkouring through the rooftops was fun. It's smooth and pretty seamless. It's ancient Greece, so I wasn't expecting massive and dense urban settlements with tightly packed rooftops like Venice or Paris. Where there were opportunities to parkour, it worked really well, but there really wasn't as much as I would have liked. I enjoyed the combat. It's very fluid and I think for the most part it's fun. A well-timed parry is very satisfying and cinematic. As you level up and spend skill points, you unlock new abilities. Your character's skills are very flashy and you have plenty of abilities in your arsenal to fight the way you want, giving you a high level of freedom in battle. Some people have complaints about enemies being damage sponges, and that is true. If that sort of thing does bother you, then combat may become annoying, especially later on in the game when it becomes more apparent. And while I noticed it, it didn't bother me that much. And forget about trying to take on a mercenary or arena opponent three levels higher than you. They might as well be a boss. The difficulty scaling is insane with enemies that outlevel you. You also have the choice to change your weapon mid-combat. For example, using a spear indoors might not be the best course of action, so being able to switch quickly between two different weapons was a nice touch, and I like that each weapon has a distinct visual fighting style. The Aegean Sea plays a pivotal role in your travels, so like an Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you'll be the captain of a trireme, a Greek warship. The controls for naval combat were responsive and precise, but it definitely lacked the firepower and punch of Black Flag. But I also understand that cannons didn't exist during this time. If I didn't have to engage in naval warfare, I would just sail away because it becomes tedious as the novelty wears out quickly. After mass murdering 17% of the ancient Greek population like a serial killer, you'll be able to reap the rewards in the form of cool items. I like the loot system. I never felt like I was behind with loot, and I was always able to find better loot when killing mercenaries, hunting collectibles, or progressing through the story. I was pleasantly surprised by the variety of weapon types and the weapon and armor skins. This game has one of the best and most well-designed customization systems out of any of the Assassin's Creed games. Being able to make any weapon within the same class and armor look the way you want allows for meaningful cosmetic customization. There are also plenty of crafting materials and collectibles peppered throughout Greece's rocky landscape. You also have the ability to craft and upgrade items by visiting a blacksmith. But I found this was largely unnecessary since you're able to replace items so quickly. 
Within major cities, estates, forts, camps, and tombs, you'll be able to find everything ranging from weapons, armor, valuable objects to sell, or tablets with riddles to solve. These riddles will lead you on a scavenger hunt that will not only give you an insight into Greek mythology and history, but also provide you with some kind of reward when solved. While there were plenty of fun things to do in ancient Greece, and I had fun exploring along the way, I felt everything was spread just a touch too far apart. Like in Origins, Odyssey uses the same leveling system. I don't have many positive things to say about this because it really didn't add anything to the game. As you complete missions and kill enemies, you gain experience and level up, which will grant you skill points to spend on learning new abilities or upgrading existing ones. All of that is well and good and I have no issues with the concept. However, doing missions used to net me the experience needed to progress onto the next mission. Sadly, this game will purposely make missions a few levels out of reach. Now, this doesn't stop me from trying, but as mentioned before, enemies become extremely difficult. These artificial level restrictions slow down the game because you'll have to set everything aside and grind a few levels to continue, usually in the form of a boring side mission. If the side missions were fun and interesting, then this wouldn't be as big of an issue. Unlike some of the games that have come before, you won't have the option of having a home base to renovate or amassing a fleet that will generate passive income, which is unfortunate since I like that about the other games, although you won't find yourself with a light wallet very often. This system has been a staple in most Assassin's Creed games since Assassin's Creed 2, and is only something I noticed was missing after I completed the game. However, with the game already this large, there are still plenty of things to do. As far as progression goes, I like the variety of skills and the customization options available with the loot that you were able to find. But unfortunately, you can't ignore the leveling system. The level restrictions placed in this game really slowed this game down too much. So how's the rest of the core gameplay? We've already touched on the free running, but what about assassinations and stealth? What's missing from this game is the hidden blade. But if I stab someone with my dagger, or in this case a spear tip, I would imagine they should take just as much damage as they would from a hidden blade. So, where have my assassinations gone? For whatever reason in Origins and now in Odyssey as well, you can't assassinate certain enemies with one clean strike. You can hold the assassination button to perform a critical assassination, but it's not always a guaranteed kill. Sure, you can take a decent chunk of their health bar, but then you'll have to finish them off with your wet noodle weapons. I like the idea of critical assassinations for more heavily armored enemies, and I think that can certainly add more depth to gameplay. But even then, I'm not sure if it's necessary. But I certainly don't like how it's implemented in this game or in Origins. Stealth is present in the game. There's plenty of tall grass and buildings that have plenty of openings and rooms. But social stealth isn't really a thing anymore since you can outrun just about anyone, and that kind of sucks. Without auto-kill assassinations, stealth doesn't seem as important. You can just tackle all your problems as a one-person army. Outside of stealthing to disable some alarms and taking out some stragglers, there isn't much of a reason to use it. With some major stealth and assassination options not in the game, you aren't allowed to be as creative as you were in older titles such as Unity. It's an odd restriction placed in the game that gives you so much freedom to travel in a world that is so vast and open, it's slightly disappointing. The music in Odyssey was good, but I think this holds true in most Assassin's Creed games. There are a few notable tracks such as the song used in the title menu, as well as a variation of Ezio's theme used during the game menu where you can view the map and your gear. There were also nice variations of the title menu theme used during the game. I wish Ubisoft would do more since the ambient music is quite forgettable, but overall the game has some nice music and it serves its purpose nicely. The voice acting is for the most part solid. There's a lot of dialogue and I thought the dialogue is decent for the main characters and supporting characters, but for the generic NPC during side missions it can be a little unnatural or strange. And you'll have to get used to it because unless you bought the time savers, you'll be doing quite a few side missions. It's a shame because there was a lot of dialogue in Odyssey, but some of it was not so good. The story is all over the place. You have three different storylines. You have your personal quest to reunite your family, another mission to slay mythological beasts, and the last one is to destroy the cult of cosmos. But more importantly, why does this game exist? It takes place before the Origins story, you know, in the game called Origins. Odyssey has an alright story, but very unfocused storytelling. That's not to say your quest for familial reunification wasn't compelling at times, because the story can be extremely gripping at certain points, but on the whole it could have been done better. I think some of the main missions and a small number of the side missions were captivating as you'll be presented with choices that may affect the outcome of your playthrough. 
Unfortunately, as stated a few times previously, doing the side missions to grind experience in order to do the main missions meant you had to do a lot of boring work. And while doing that, you forget what the real mission is because your mind has been pulled away. That and the underwhelming storytelling left me with an unsatisfying journey. The war and the arena were for the most part pretty pointless and inconsequential, and the mythological beasts seemed like they were just thrown in there. Like naval battles, outside of participating in the war for the first time as a requirement to progress the story, I would never touch it again. The Cult of Cosmos is the last of the three main storylines you can complete in the game. How fitting is it that it would start at the Cradle of Democracy? It's a neat idea since it's basically the pre-pre-Templars, but why have so many of them? Ultimately, the story, as well as the rest of the game, lacks focus. I don't mind a shallow story, but you should have something that will make up for it, like faster game pacing. But the game is too big and slow. Everything seemed a little diluted. If they had focused more on storytelling, I think this game could have come together at least a little better. They compromised so much of the game's pacing in order to sell you time savers, and the game suffers for it. If they had made the side quests interesting, then that would have been another thing entirely. If that was the case, then the time saver microtransactions wouldn't have felt so in your face, because then the grind wouldn't have been a grind. But to be fair, it shouldn't be in the game to begin with. Oh, my bad. No problem. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine. Um, I'll just destroy this office. Oh, hey! <clears throat> Money, please! Money, please. Money, please. Ben, give her some money. It's easier. Would I recommend this game? I know what you're thinking. He's already given his thoughts on it. There's no possibility that he would recommend this game. And you'd be right. I would not recommend this game. Unless you derive a lot of enjoyment from exploration, or if you're dead set on seeing ancient Greece, because there's nothing else like it. But let me paint it in a different light. Imagine you're going on vacation or holiday somewhere. You're having a great time, going with the flow, seeing all the attractions, and taking in all the sights. Yes, you're having a good time because that's what you're there for. But would you feel the same way if you lived there? That is what Odyssey is. The first 20 to 30 hours is the vacation. The latter half is after having lived there for 20 years. After a while, that commute on horseback or by boat has lost its novelty and you're dragging your feet to finish the game. I could recommend the first half of the game and I would say it's up to you whether or not you want to finish the second half. From my own personal experience, this is how I played Odyssey. I started the game and it was great and I played it for about 30 hours, then sadly became bored so I stopped, unsure if I would return. After 6 months have passed, I wanted to play Assassin's Creed, but not Odyssey. So, I started Syndicate, and I liked it enough where it reignited and reinvigorated my desire to finish Odyssey. Only then was I able to go back to play and finish the latter half of the game. To sum things up, I couldn't help but feel this game was spread just a little too thin. The world? Looks amazing, but it's too big. The music? Enjoyable. Game pacing? Slower than it should be. Characters? Some were interesting. Voice acting? Solid. Dialogue? It's okay. Traversal? Seamless. Combat? Alright, this was kind of fun. Loot system? Actually, I really liked it. Progression? The leveling system sucked. Assassinations? Lame. Stealth? Disappointing. Side missions? Mega lame and immersion breaking. Microtransactions? Thanks, I hate it. With the quantity versus quality balance, they definitely went for quantity. You can definitely have both, it's been done, but not here. The world is epic in scale, but empty without substance. It's not a bad or terrible game, no, far from it. This game could have scored several points higher, were it more streamlined and deliberate with its purpose. As it stands now, I lament what this game could have been. It's a case of wasted potential as it could have been a great open world RPG. But apparently, I'm in the minority, as the game sold incredibly well, and many people seem to like or love this game. I wish I could too. Who doesn't want to be able to enjoy a game, especially an Assassin's Creed game? If you like this game, then I'm glad you were able to enjoy it. These are just my opinions, and what you value from a game will be different from me. And if you liked it, I'm kind of surprised you made it this far into the video. After a quick number crunch, this video had a 32.33, repeating of course, percent chance of becoming a rant and going off the rails. Mostly from the perspective of the story. So let's briefly explore that now. This will be more of a mini rant, since most rants just repeat the same 5 things over for an hour. I think a lot of people's criticisms lie with the fact that this game is called Assassin's Creed. Is it an Assassin's Creed game? Technically yes, because Ubisoft says so. But aside from the title, it does have a lot of core gameplay shared within the Assassin's Creed family, so in that respect, maybe one can argue it is. However, the story told is not about the Creed, so in that respect, maybe it's not. 
Ultimately, I think that's most important. It's not so much that the execution was poor, because it was, but just that it's not an Assassin's Creed story. This game takes place long before the origin story. As I mentioned here and in my review of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, I don't mind a shallow story, but if you're going to do that, then you have to offer something to make up for it. This game doesn't offer unique gameplay since it's largely the same as Origins, nor does it offer quick game pacing to take my mind off the story, because 1. the world is too big, 2. I have to grind side missions to level up, 3. side missions are boring. If I were to describe the first season of the television show Gotham to my friends, I wouldn't bill it as a Batman show, because there's no Batman, Bruce Wayne is still a kid. If I had, my friends would be super disappointed and never trust in any of my reviews again. And that's what Ubisoft did here. They've billed Odyssey as an Assassin's Creed game when they may have done much better dropping that branding for this title. I have lost some faith in the name Assassin's Creed. But even on its own, as an open world RPG, Odyssey has very few redeeming qualities for me. I think it's actually very similar to why people disliked Far Cry Primal since it carries the Far Cry name, which I understand. However, unlike Odyssey, I think that game does stand on its own, without the Far Cry name, whereas Odyssey perhaps does not. Maybe I'll explore that in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and let me know what I should talk about next. And if you want to share your experience with Odyssey, you can drop a comment below. Until next time, see ya. Yeah. Hardcore, parkour! Hardcore, parkour! Parkour! I'm right behind you!